nowadays there have been a constant question regarding chilit chakra bhava chart bhava kundali chilit kundali which people have been asking generally in the comment section of youtube videos i see that people generally inquire about chalit chakra chalit kundali bhav kundali this problem is not with students they know that i don't use chalit kundali but in the comment section it is a question apparently this is happening because people are busy and they cannot see complete video they cannot watch all the videos read all the articles of mine and they want a quick answer certainly because they are busy and only we people are sitting free we have a lot of free time they are busy not a problem I have told you the answer right now that I don't use Chilith Chakra, Chilith Kundali, Bhava Kundali. But why? Many people use it, Shubham Ji, why you don't use? If many people start jumping into a well, I will also not jump. Right? If many people start doing something, does not mean you should also start doing the same thing. So why I don't use Chalit Chakra or why I don't use something, the answer, my friend, is always very, very simple. Because I don't find that working in my experience. You see, you have to understand one thing that in any subject, even in something like spirituality, people have their different approaches, people have their different realizations. Someone may pay emphasis to mantra chanting, someone may pay emphasis to going to the temple, someone may pay emphasis to contemplation, someone may pay emphasis to devotion. And the problem in astrology, I believe, I have seen a recent comment where person is telling that, sir, one person is saying this thing, another person is saying that thing, we become confused. This is very certain to happen. Because any path you want to go, you have to follow the path completely. Only then you will be able to get the result. So I am not talking about myself. I am talking about any person. If you are following one person, just follow one person and do everything they are saying. That will lead you to the result. I am not essentially saying follow me only. But just follow one person. Because if you put rice, if you put milk, in order to make payasam khir, what you call. But then you also put salt into it and you also put spice into it and you also put turmeric into it or, and you also put tamarind into it and you also put cloves into it. Apparently what you will get will neither be a khichdi nor be a payasam, right? So the point is if you are following one person, just follow one person and regarding the things that I use and things that I don't use, this is based on my experience and what I have found that everyone have their own approach of looking at things, right? Someone may give more importance to Rashi, some may give more importance to Bhavas, one will have different methods of finding the strongest planets, etc. And apparently, anyone who is truthful, and I believe that everyone is truthful, so the technique and the method that one is teaching certainly works for them, and it will also work for you when you follow one person. If you try to follow a multitude of people, what you will get is only confusion. So save yourself from this and follow one person. If you really want to make progress, if you want to check your horoscope or check horoscope of anyone else, this is the approach you have to take. Told quite a good things in the beginning. Because basically I don't want to criticize anyone. But in the course of this video, this is what I will be forced to do. So I have told you my opinion right in the beginning. Regarding Chalit Chakra, Chalit Chakra is one of the greatest absurdity that can be there in the world of astrology. Certainly there are many people who will say that Chalit Chakra works, Chalit Chakra is very great, Chalit Chakra is this, Chalit Chakra is that. The result 
why they are so saying so is their ignorance because i highly doubt whether these people know how to see a horoscope how to read a horoscope whether these people actually make predictions they have made predictions whether they cons give consultations on horoscope whether they keep a track record of how many of their consultations have came true how many of their clients are repeating or not i don't think they do it because any astrologer i will explain in this video with some examples also any astrologer who knows astrology properly who practices astrology gives predictions and keep a track record of the predictions that is coming true cannot use chalit chakra at all this is a very firm opinion because it does not work regarding chalit chakra there is no straight talk with respect to chalit chakra that is the problem what i believe and anyone you want to go and you see any 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 thing you want to see on chalit chakra people are like let's not go into the technical aspects of how it is done let's talk about chalit chakra bhai why don't go into technical aspects of it my friend why not go into calculation things such as astrology you cannot do it ignoring the calculations right not going into technical aspects of it let's talk how it works are bhai kyon why not go into technical aspects of it what is the problem no no my friend you should go into technical aspects of it and try to understand because things such as astrology jyotishyam pratyaksha shastram surya chandrama yatra sakshino whatever is happening in jyotish pratyaksha shastram right the result can be seen through the eyes and sun and moon are the witness of astrology so whatever is the result can be seen should be seen and you know as a practitioner what type of practitioner is this who is practicing astrology and telling you i don't know calculation or let's not go into calculations just go into result are how without calculation you are lending to result god knows god knows and people see people are very vulnerable gullible yeah from this chalit chakra system my good planet goes to bad house from that chalit chakra system my bad planet come my good planet remains in good house so i will follow that system from which my horoscope looks good what is the real event that is going to happen what is the reality apparently that does not matter see i have done just a consultation today and in the consultation i told that okay you have three planets in the eighth house but it is no problem for you don't worry i myself have a video where i will say planet in 6 8 12 house is a bad bad planet but that depends on what bad which planet and multiple multiple things in the horoscope there is one planet in 8th house which is known rashi another planet in 8th house which is exalted third planet in 8th house is vargottam two of these planets are lord of bad houses only one is lord of good house and that two is exalted so what is the problem lord of bad house is going into bad house in that also rashi condition is good so i will contradict to the same principle and i will say for your horoscope it is very good and there is no two thoughts into it but the point is that people have no i believe you know they have no uh, they have no uh, they, they don't want to listen to the reality they don't want to listen to the truth right what makes my horoscope look good is what i want the reality of the life people don't want to say i, I don't know how it became how, when and how astrology became the escape route of the escapist i am yet to find it like how this is a thing related to truth right uh, astrology is not for your right uh, the astrology is not fulfilling your whims and fancies right it is not a science where you will you know where, where you will look at your horoscope and you will be happy oh, oh, oh my horoscope is very good my life will be very good not realizing that it is not it is the science of truth right one should try to see the truth one should realize the truth is the purpose but what i have noticed the astrologer with a bad planet will start saying that planet is good astrologer having jupiter in 8000 in their video jupiter in 8000 is very good people having debilitated jupiter in their videos debilitated jupiter is very good 
right they have new research because according to them they are the direct complete sodash uh, kala avatar manifestation of the sampurna brahman they themselves are they are the gods who are incarnate and whatever is in their horoscope that is a very good combination and other combinations are very bad combinations it seems to be their approach but my friend my approach is not that many combinations which i say bad and people start people cry on those combinations i also have the same combinations but i don't have this tendency or rather say hallucination of saying that everything that is happening in my horoscope is correct you know why because i know how a horoscope is read how a horoscope is analyzed so bad factor can be there and despite the bad factor there can be good result you should know how to analyze it but those people who don't know how to analyze the horoscope certainly they will generally say that this plan they will say bad planets are good right but this is not the approach this is not the path of the truth this is not the path of the reality is something that you have to understand but lots of talking let's directly jump straight to the video talking about others and other topics can be done for very long but that's not the purpose so i will divide the video into two sections in the last section we are going to take four examples two male example two female example and before that we'll talk about some basic basic things some 20 25 points 26 points to be precise one point have multiple other points also so many points basically 30 35 points regarding why i myself am telling you that chalit chakra should not be used so there are two type of calculation methods for chalit chakra apparently I will explain it to you in a nutshell so that you understand it quickly, quickly. Not going much into the technical discussion, but understanding the framework of it. One system is elliptical based system. Elliptic based system. This systems tell you that this is earth. On this earth, you make a great circle from east to west, a great circle from north to south. Now the point facing the east direction, this suppose this is east. East direction from the birthplace, a person is born here in the east direction from the birthplace. The Rashi which is rising in the east direction is the Lagna, right? That's the technical definition of the Lagna. Rashi rising in the eastern direction is the Lagna and the point that is rising in the eastern direction is the Lagna degree. This elliptical based system wants to find the 10th house. I will tell, I should tell you one thing. There are multiple systems of Bhava divisions out there more than 28, 29. Apparently, we're discussing all of them and discussing the technical aspects of all of them will be very long. So it can be divided into two sections, right? Elliptical based system, time based system. Elliptical based system is what is known as Shripati system. Multiple other variations are there. Basis is the same. Time based system is what you know as KP system. KP system or otherwise what is known as krishna murti system right these two systems we are discussing because apparently we are doing vedic jyotish and these two are the most popular systems but understand that all the systems of house division is more or less based on these two systems only so the system of shripati is that dependent on the 10th house lagna lagna is the rashi rising in the eastern direction so anywhere you are born on the earth from there, you go to the eastern direction and you see the Rashi that is rising there. Certainly, the sky is surrounding the earth. There are 12 Rashis in the sky. Right? 
Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces. Suppose, sorry for my drawing, not very good. But no problem. So at the time of birth, in the eastern direction, this Cancer Rashi was there. You will say this person is born in Cancer and provided the fact that the person is born in Cancer. And provided the fact that this is 0 degree of cancer and this is 29 degree of cancer and because the person is born here, he will be born around 11 to 12 degrees of cancer. This is mathematically done. So the point is at the time of sunrise, let's understand these basic points very clearly. Otherwise, there will be confusion. At the time of sunrise, sun have a degree in a Rashi. Which is directly in the ascendant right at the time of sunrise sun is in the exact east this is the degree in the ascendant now you know around 14th april sun enters zero degree aries for the next 365 days sun will cover 360 degrees and because the zodiac is also 360 degrees the sun will cover complete rashi in one year so on 14th of April, sunrise will happen at 0 degree Aries. On 15th of April, sunrise will happen at 1 degree Aries. 16th April, sunrise will happen at 2 degree Aries. All up to 13th of April, where sunrise will be happening at 29 degree Pisces. This is the basic setup. Now, because there are 12 houses in horoscope and there are 24 hours, approximately in 2 hours, the sun will go from 1st house to 12th house. 12th house in the same degree, right? So if the sun was at 12 degrees in the ascendant, in 2 hours he will have to reach 12 degrees in 12th house. Now let's understand one thing. 1 hour have 60 minutes and in that 60 minutes, planet have to cover 30 degrees. So in 60 minute planet have to cover 30 degrees. That means he will be covering 2 degree per minute. Sorry, in 120 minute, 2 hours it have to go. Sorry, sorry. The way I search, 2 degree, 4 degree it should be. So in 2 hours, he have to cover 30 degrees. So 4 degrees per minute he will cover, right? 4 degrees per minute he will cover. Now, because sunrise happened at 12 degrees, Rashi is of 30 degrees, 30 minus 12. 18 degrees are there and 1 degree it is crossing in 4 minutes. So, 18 degree he will cross in 72 minutes. 72 minutes will be 1 hour, 12 minute. So, when sun is at 0 degrees in any Rashi, he should go to the 12th house in two hours and every day it will be little bit less, little bit, little bit less. So on that day, when sun is rising at 12 degree in any Rashi, in one hour and 12 minutes, sun will go into the 12th house. Right? And exactly in two hours, he will be 12 degree in the 12th house. Right? That's the point. You say if the sun is rising in Aries at 12 degrees, in one hour, 12 minutes, Sun is going into 12th house and sun remains in Aries. So when Aries becomes 12th house, Pisces becomes the ascendant. This is how the ascendant is changing. This is same as from the birthplace. You find the Rashi which is rising in the eastern direction. So what is happening? Sun keeps on moving and with the movement of sun, the Rashi where the sun is situated in goes farther, farther, farther away. And next Rashi comes into the ascendant. Basically, sun is not moving. The zodiac is heliocentric. The earth is moving. So the movement of earth is the movement of sun in astrology. So what is in how sun is indicated in Vedic astrology? It is indicated through earth is the basic point. Right, correct, good. It is the Rashi in the eastern direction. Ascendant is the Rashi in eastern direction. This point is very clear. We will come to it later on. Right now this Space-based system, elliptic-based system is telling you to find the 10th house. 10th house is the highest point. Before we go into the 10th house, you should understand one more thing. In a horoscope,
ascendant indicates the east direction. 10th house indicates the south direction. 7th house indicates the west direction and 4th house indicates the north direction. At the time of sunrise, sun will be in the east direction. At the time of sunset, sun will be in the west direction. In mid-noon, sun will be in the south direction. And midnight, sun will be in north direction. So at noon, sun should be in the 10th house. 10th house is known as zenith or highest point. Highest point, why? Because at the time of noon, sun is told to be above your head. Above your head in the sky, that is the zenith, that is the highest point. So what this elliptical system is telling you, this elliptical system is telling you that find the point where the sun is at the highest. To do so, what they do to earth, they make concentric circles east to west, north to south. But the point is sun do not cross over complete earth. You have to understand this. Earth is tilted, right? You know that earth is little bit tilted. This tilt is of some degrees. So there is a middle line which is known as equator. Then there is Tropic of Cancer. In the above side there is North. Cancer is the North Rashi. So when Sun enters into Capricorn, he starts Northern World Codes, right? Uttrayan. And in the south direction, downward in south, is the Tropic of Capricorn. Capricorn is Rashi in the south direction. You see the diagram of the Sun, right? South 10th house Capricorn. North 4th house Cancer. This is called Dakshinayan. Equator is the center. Sun keeps on moving between this line, right? Between the Tropic of Cancer to Tropic of Capricorn throughout the year. And he never goes farther than this. So to some places, sun is never rising at some... Sun is never crossing over some places, right? Sun is only crossing over these places only. I do one thing we search. So when you see Google Earth, you see in this Google Earth, right? You see Earth, you see Tropic of Cancer in the north, Tropic of Capricorn in the south and Prime Meridian in between. Equator, what is written? Now, I will come to this country, we zoom. Now you see Venezuela, Guana, French Guana, Brazil, Peru. These places are all falling between Tropic of Cancer to Tropic of Capricorn, but this child, Argentina, Buenos Aires, Cordoba, State of Rio de Grande do Sol, Sao Paulo, right, South Georgia and the South Sandwich Island, above these places, it is not falling between Tropic of Cancer to Tropic of Capricorn, right? So, sun is never crossing above these places. The places above which sun is never crossing, the people of those places generally have white complexion. They do not have tanning, no. Above you see, up in San Diego, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Colorado, Arizona, Dallas, Oklahoma, these places, it is above Tropic of Cancer, right? And this section that you see right here at these places, apparently sun is never reaching, right? This Greenland, etc. area, sun is never reaching. The, right, the night is very long, the day is very long. The same happens in the India section also, you see, Tropic of Cancer is also crossing somewhere in India, right? Above this, above Jaipur, etc., sun is never crossing over it, right? North Indian people have white complexion, seems like. All of these things. Leave this aside. So, sun is not crossing from every place, is what you have to understand. Now, what this is telling you, this system is telling you that suppose this is the path of sun. In this path of sun, let me make the diagram a bit better. So this is a concentric circle. East to west, this is a concentric circle, north to south, and this is the path of sun. In this path of sun, this is the highest point. Project this highest point on earth. And wherever, whenever, wherever it, at whichever place, at whichever Rashi, this is being projected. Let's call it the zenith or the 10th house. Now 
वाव बड़ा सिस्टम लेट्स कॉल इट जेनेट और द टेन थाउजेंड द हाईएस्ट पॉइंट अबव योर हेड वेर द सन इज क्रॉसिंग फ्रॉम बट यू आर जस्ट अंडरस्टूड दैट सन इज नॉट क्रॉसिंग ऑल ओवर द अर्थ एंड बिकॉज़ इट इज नॉट क्रॉसिंग ऑल ओवर द अर्थ फॉर पीपल बोर्न इन रशिया चाइना इफ यू आर फाइंडिंग द जेनेट इट्स एक्चुअली नॉट एंटायरली अबव योर हेड for people in the northern regions you first come to south then you calculate above the head and for people in the south you first come to north then you calculate above the head because sun is only crossing in the center so this point of zenith is correct but only to this places which is falling between tropic of cancer to tropic of capricorn this is one major problem but you don't understand this problem because you don't do the calculation that that's why it is told it is told in classics that the astrologer who can only see panchang and predict result based on panchang is nakshatra suchi and that nakshatra suchi is abused even by sages this nakshatra suchi is told very bad nakshatra suchi is told that you should beat nakshatra suchi who tell you oh, today is a good nakshatra do this today is a bad nakshatra don't do this such nakshatra suchi is highly criticized an astrologer who is an astrologer who know about the mathematical who knows everything in astrology right mathematical system prashna mundane astrology and everything sakala gamachar siddhant samhita aura spherical astronomy mathematical astrology mundane astrology natal chart prashna muhurta the one who knows all of these things is only astrologer and only astrologer is expected nakshatra suchi is not understand this point that will be better this is one point now in the shripati paddhati lagna you already have the calculation of 10th house you do after that you know what you do after that you do nothing the point of the lagna you put automatically to the 7th house the point of 10th house you give automatically to 4th house and whatever is the distance between lagna to 10th house that should be divided into two parts which is taken as the joining part of the 12th and 11th house the opposite to that is the joining part of 6th and 5th house in the same manner take between the 10th house to lagna all over again certainly the same thing is the middle point in the 7th house divide it into two parts which is the junction of 9th house and 8th house and opposite of 8 is the junction of the 2nd house and 3rd house thus you make it so though apparently it is told that you calculate all houses but basic point is you are only calculating the 10th house lagna is already there and remaining houses you are finding by fraction or remaining houses you are finding by rule of 3 remaining houses you are find by rule of medi medium right you are actually not finding each and every houses right this is a false statement you are only finding the 10th house this discrepancy how you can call it a bhava chart when only 10th house is calculated and all the houses are not being calculated at all this is one system two discrepancies so i have told you right here sun is not crossing all over the place so when you say the highest point above the sky sun above the head to many people living in areas which is not falling between tropic of cancer to tropic of capricorn sun is never crossing over your head sun is crossing by the side right so you see like sun is crossing over your head you say it is crossing in the east but if sun is crossing over this section only and you are not living between tropic of cancer to tropic of capricorn now if you have to calculate sun crossing over your head you will calculate this way and this cannot be told as east in any way because it will be southeast saying that it is east only is erroneous it is actually southeast right eight directions are there one will tell you that no i only know four directions so i will do calculation based on the four directions only it is their mistake right some someone tells you that i don't identify female gender i will consider everyone as male only what do you say to them <laughs> you don't identify female gender that is my friend your problem what we have to do into this this is sripati system right pori fairy houses sripati second is placed as house system krishna murti Mr. Krishna Murthy loved Western astrology a lot.
so much that in his KP astrology, he uses Fortuna, which is used in Western astrology. He uses Western aspects. These are the true epitome of whatever is done in West is something that we should take. The pant shirt culture nowadays, so there is very, very much into it. Eh? Our culture is also good. Our culture is also best. That is very good. That is very fine. But the system of Placidus is entirely copied as it is in KP system. This is time-based system. What I was telling you, this is a time-based system. So this time-based system is telling you there is an apparent time of sunrise and there is a time of sunset, which should be 12 hours basically, but it is not 12 hours exactly. And there is a time between sunset and there is a time between sunrise. This should be 12 hours, but it is not exactly 12 hours because the day and night is only equal when the sun is in Capricorn and Cancer, right? There are two days when the day and night is equal and after that either day duration is increasing or the night duration is increasing. For an example, if you take the day today, I am talking of Dehradun. The sunrise is happening at 6.18.54 a.m. And sunset is happening at 5.51.55 p.m. From 6.18, 12 hours will be 6.18. But the sunset is happening at 5.51, which is... Twenty-seven minutes earlier. Twenty-seven minutes earlier means out of the day is not of twelve hours. The day is of eleven hours thirty-three minutes. Then the night sunset, as you can see, sunset is happening at seventeen fifty-two. 17.51 around. Next day sunrise will happen at 6.20. So 5.52 sunset is happening. 6.20 sunrise will happen from 5.52 to 5.52 will be 12 hours. And above that it is 2 plus 20. 32. 12 hours 32 minutes is the day duration, night duration, sorry. 12 hours 32 minutes is the night duration. So night is long, day is short. If you make a total of it, 11 hours plus 12 hours is 23 hours. And 33 minutes plus 32 minutes is 65 minutes, right? So the day is 23 hours, 65 minutes, 65 minutes are not there. So it is technically 24 hours, 5 minutes. So one day and night should be 24 hours equally, but it is 24 hours, 5 minutes. You know why? Because sun have to cross 360 degrees in 365 days. So certainly because the degree and day is not equal, it is not exactly one degree per day. This is the point. You have to understand. Okay. So this time-based system is telling you that there is a time between sunrise and sunset, but it is not exactly 12 hours. And there is a time between sunsets and sunrise, which is not exactly 12 hours also. So it is telling you that, okay, the day is of 11 hour 33 minutes, which is apparently if you divide it into minutes, 11 hours, one hour having 60 minutes is a total of 660 minutes plus 33 minutes, so 660 plus 33 is happening 693 minutes. And in this 693 minutes, what will happen? Six Rashis will rise. Right at the time of sunrise, if the sun is situated in, at the time of sunrise today, where the sun is situated in 6, 18, 54 a.m. is the sunrise. So let me put the time. 6, 18, 54 a.m. Sorry, I put p.m. into it. AM sunrise is happening. You see what will happen. Lagna is 19 degree Virgo 19 minutes. Sun is 19 degree Virgo 19 minutes. At the time of sunrise, sun is exactly in the ascendant. Now sun is situated in Virgo. 
at the time of sunrise that means at the time of sunset virgo will be in the seventh house which means pisces will be the ascendant so six rashis will rise in the daytime and six rashis will ri rise in the night time so 693 minute is the total duration of the daytime this 693 minutes you divide into six rashis the answer will be 111.5 one, one, one minutes 111.5 one, one, one minute means let's make it as sorry 115.5 one, 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 five minutes 115.5 one, one, minutes okay 115.5 one, one, minutes Let's take it as 115. 115 is 60 minutes is 1 hour. So it is 1 hour. 55 minutes. And 0 0.5 multiplied by 60, 30 seconds. So it is telling you that, okay, the day is of 693 minutes. And in this day of 693 minutes, 6 rashes will have to rise. So in 115.5 minutes, one Rashi should rise. Right? That means in one hour, 55 minutes and 30 seconds, one Rashi will rise. So if you add one hour, 55 minutes, 30 seconds at the time of sunrise, this should give you the time when the second Rashi should rise. On the same degree, this is the question. We in Vedic Astrology is taking that the degree is the middle point. Right? That the degree is the middle point. The degree that you see in the ascendant is the middle point of the house. But some also say that this is the starting point of the house. This is once again a dubious point. We'll have to come to this dubious point. So sunrise is happening at 6, 18, 17. 6, 18, 17. You add 1 hour 55 minutes into it. 1 hour 55 minutes 30 seconds. So 17 into 30 is 47 seconds. 18 plus 55 is equal to 73 seconds. And 6 plus 1 is 7. 73 seconds cannot be there. There can be 60 uh, sorry, 60 minutes are only there in one hour. So it is 13. And 7 is added to 8. So at 8, 13, 47, next Rashi, Sun is situated in Virgo. Next Rashi, Libra should rise. What is happening at 8, 13, 47 exactly? If you take 8, 13, 47, Libra is rising but at 13 degrees. Because the sun was in 19 degrees 24 minutes into Virgo, by the time of 813, 19 degree of Libra should be there, but it is not. Because the movement of sun that is taken is taken with respect to 12 hours, but the day is not exactly 12 hours, right? That's the problem. So this is where the calculation starts. It says that, okay, you add three hours into it and so this is the time where the so the span right the span of first house is from sunrise 19 degree virgo 24 minutes up to 13 degree libra 59 minutes is the span of the first house and after this starts the second house right this is how the calculation is done for the time based system system seems to be very good System seems to be flawless, but there is a small, small issue that happens with it. In the Arctic Circle and in the Antarctica Circle and at many places, sunrise, there are sunrise for six days, there is sunset for uh, six days. At some places, there is sunrise for very long. There is sunset for very long. So the conception of time, because the sun, because the earth is a little bit tilted, at some places, sun is never reaching. I don't know if we can do this again. 
गूगल अर्थ इज अवी एप्लीकेशन एक्चुअली some places are there you can do a easily google search right fairbanks alaska is the place where you will see in the middle of the night also the sun is shining bright right lofoten islands norway is also a place where you can play golf in the middle night right reykjavik island is iceland is such place and i visco sweden etc multiple places are there now the point is that see astrology is a universal system right it applies to everyone i sometimes start thinking that if people actually settle to moon or mars then we as an astrologer if we get a client situated in mars how we will make their horoscope so i jokingly say that now we replace the position of earth to the position of sun at that point of time we replace the position of mars to the position of sun and we will take earth as an extra planet and apparently we cannot give the attribute of mars to earth so we will have to search for new attributes right astrology is universal i always say whenever this is the topic of discussion that why remedies are not included in mainstream astrology i always say that because astrology is for everyone not for someone living in a particular area not for someone of a particular religion it is for everyone it is universal so the principles are universal now this principle as you yourself understand because some places night is very long sunset is never actually happening it cannot be calculated all over the world and because it cannot be calculated all over the world this is not truth this is a statement i am teaching bhagavad gita nowadays and i am i am teaching it like you know it is told that brahma satyam jagan mithya the god is truth and the world is false how so you see i have this pen in my hand is this pen false i can touch it but what is the concept of truth truth is something which is same for everyone which is eternal this play, this pen is not permanent it was produced and it will be destroyed right so it is not eternal and the experience is same for everyone i know how to read and write i use this pen someone who does not know how to read and write the experience of this pen for them can be something else so it is not eternal it is not permanent truth is what is eternal truth is what is permanent this is untruth the system is untruth because it does it cannot happen all over the earth right there are some other serious questions also so this is one point that i have just told you these are the two systems in the first system elliptical based system the problem is and is not passing all over the earth and in the second system the problem is at every place sunrise and sunset is not actually happening right the duration of the day and night is not actual for every place you have to understand it now regarding vedic astrology because we are practicing vedic astrology we call it vedic astrology some people may say that the word vedic astrology is a misnomer suddenly some day we can make video over it as well if someone says there is no mention of astrology in the vedas they should understand vedas and i can say for certain that they have not read complete vedas but my point is that it is not called vedic astrology because it is mentioned in vedas but it is called vedic astrology because it uses the ideas which is given in vedas and postulated in other texts that's why it is called vedic astrology we are doing vedic astrology we say we are doing vedic astrology because we are following the principles laid down by our sages and regarding the opinions one point is very clear rashi chetra grihaksh bani chai kartha sampratya rashi rashi you know chetra means house division division chetra means division griha griha means house bhava 
छ छ इज नक्षत्र भानी भानी इज ऑल्सो नक्षत्र च एक अर्थ च एक अर्थ इज मीनिंग द सेम संप्रत्यय थिंग्स तो श्लोका इज वेली कर राशि क्षेत्र गृहक्ष भानी च एक अर्थ संप्रत्यय राशि हाउस एक्सेट्रा इज द सेम थिंग राशि एंड हाउस इज द सेम दैट इज द पर्टिकुलर रीजन यू से मर्करी यू से मर्करी इज फिफ्थ लॉर्ड मर्करी कैन नॉट बी द फिफ्थ लॉर्ड मर्करी इज लॉर्ड ऑफ द राशि विच इज फॉलोइंग इन द फिफ्थ हाउस सो से इफ इट इज अप्रिकॉन एस एंड इफ इट इज अफ इट इज अप्रिकॉन एस एंड टॉरस इफ इट इज अ टॉरस एस एंड फिफ्थ हाउस विल बी वर्गो So you say for Taurus ascendant, Mercury is the fifth house lord. Certainly, Mercury is not the lord of the fifth house. Mercury is the lord of Virgo. So you should say Mercury is the lord of Virgo. Virgo is falling in fifth house. But when you analyze the fifth house, you say Mercury is the lord of fifth house. Why Mercury is not the lord of the house? Right? There is no lord of the house. There are significators of the house. Lord is of the Rashi only. Right? But this is how we deal with astrology, right? Because house in the Rashi is the same. In some system like Sripati or some other system, a Rashi is thirty degree, but house is not thirty degree. So it can be that initial ten degree of the fifth house is Leo, and remaining ten degree of the fifth house is Virgo. So what you will say? Fifth house is ten percent Leo, ten degree Leo, and remaining it is Virgo, and the Lord of the tenth house, Lord of the fifth house is both Sun and Mercury. So when you analyze the fifth house, you analyze both sun and Mercury. Yeah, this is not the way you do it, because if you go this way, things will be completely lost. We say that Venus and Saturn are friends. How do you know they are friends? Because for ascendant of Venus, Saturn will be Rajyogkari. For the ascendant of Saturn, Venus will be Rajyogkari. But this will be true. This will be correct only. When you go by the opinion that Rashi and house is the same, otherwise, if you use any of the system, particularly Shri Pati, it can be the case that for Libra ascendant, the Lord of the fourth house can be Jupiter, and Lord of the fifth house can be Jupiter also. In that case, for Libra ascendant, the Lord of two good houses should be Jupiter, and in that scenario, you should say that Jupiter is friendly to Venus and Saturn is not. in this system because houses are elongated it can be the case that in a horoscope at the latitudes which is very close to the northern or southern pole it will be the case that a rashi may not fall in a house so it can be that for one libra person born anywhere near southern pole and northern pole it can be that no house kaspal is falling in the aquarius rashi so what you will say for this person there is no aquarius rashi in the sky what if there is uh, what if the person is born right now saturn will be situated in aquarius what you will say for this person there is no saturn in his horoscope ha huh? these things you don't consider because the sky is a 3d map that you are projecting on a 2d horoscope but this is the reality if you follow the system this is the reality but is it the reality that we are going to say that we are going to stand by i am asking you question you know the answer you intelligent people you are so you use that. so this complete setup right rajyogkari friendly inimical you know how friendship and enmity is decided right i must have talked about in some of the previous video you start calculating from the mool trikona rashi of the planet the planets owning 3rd 6th 7th 10th 11th from the mool trikona rashi is inimical the one owning other houses is friendly the planet owning one inimical rashi and one friendly rashi is a neutral planet this will fall all the basic astrological systems will fall if you start using this so something which gives one benefit uh, that is also not a benefit i will explain to you but something which gives you one singular benefit but multitudes of losses is that a system that you want to that you should follow but as i told you initially you know people are people who use chalit chakra are ignorant that is ignorant of how astrology works ignorant of how the formulas of astrology are derived and all of these things so people will say you use chalit chakra you read chalit chakra you read the calculation and you just don't read the calculation it is very easy to read find the 10000 this, this is the method 
you also try to understand that if you do this, what will happen? Right, someone tells you how to shoot a gun, okay, put bullets, load the gun, shoot it, push the trigger, you shoot the gun, you read it, you do it, is not how the life works, right? You understand the consequences that if you shoot the gun, what is going to happen? You understand the consequences, right? This is how it works. So not only read, understand as well. Not only in Vedic astrology, in Greek astrology, in Hellenistic astrology, also house and Rashi is the one, the system is followed. So all the ancient astrological systems almost have the same opinion. Where does the problem came from? So see, we are Vedic people, no, we have a lot of things. We have our philosophy coming from the great sages, coming from the Vedas and we have everything coming from very long, but everyone is not so blessed. For Westerners, the knowledge is not that ancient, right? It comes from the time of Ptolemy, Ptolemy, or whatever it is called, Ptolemy, Archimedes. Right, the great intelligent people, the philosophical age, the knowledge comes from philosophical age, Aristotle, Plato, etc. Certainly, we all know that Aristotle and Plato are not as old as Bharadwaj, Kanad, Gautam, Rishis, right? We know that. We have to accept the point. But what to do of these people, right? What to do of these people? The Roman Empire became so big, they went all over the world, but certainly they were not the most ancient ones, right? The problem comes from misunderstanding of what Ptolemy is doing in his Tetra Biblos. So Ptolemy, if you read Tetra Biblos properly, you will find that Ptolemy, uh, Ptolemy, Ptolemy, whatever it should be pronounced, is using two systems. He is using the equal house system where he is saying that there is a Lagna degree and the Lagna started five degrees before the Lagna degree and extends till 25 degrees after the Lagna degree and using this system the houses and planet and houses should be calculated and results should be told. But the problem in Western astrology is we have a lot of principles, we have a lot of tools and primary of that tool is Dasha Antra Dasha because we come from a great long tradition but they don't have that. For them to be able to time events, they have progressions, primary progression, secondary progression, territory progression, territory progression too and they have transits. Now, because they don't have superior principles such as Dasha and Tradasha, they only have progressions and they only have transits and apparently you know that progression and transit is not meeting planets so very quickly and even when it is meeting, it is giving the repeated results. So, they have to use houses a lot because they are not having things such as Dasha and Tradasha. Maturity of planet, fructification of planet, all of these things that we are having in Indian astrology, they are not having it. And because they are not having it, they will have they have to find the cuspel of houses, middle point of houses. And to do that, Ptolemy uses medium coily based house system, what we call Sripti. But it is very clear in Tetra Bibulos that he is using it for directions only. Directions means progression timing events. Ptolemy have done it, and later astrologers such as Porphyrios and Rehatoris also used the same option. In fact, there is a person by the name of Valens who is contemporary of Ptolemy. He also does the same thing. He uses equal house system for delineation of result, finding the result, what result is going to happen and is using quadrants, quadrant system for strength calculation. Quadrant system is also a Bhavachalit type of system, right? Quadrant based system is there. The same system more or less is followed in ancient India also. Ancient India as in using the equal house system for predicting the result is followed. Right. Progressions, etc. Directions, etc. We don't use because you have we have better dashas. Right. That not you see regarding the progressions, I told you primary progression, secondary progression, territory progression, one, two, four progression systems. We have more than 300 dashas, right? So we are not into a scarcity. So why we will use some smaller and weaker systems, right? Also, the thing with directions and transit is that in ancient times when there were no software, etc., it was very time consuming process to calculate it over and over again. And many times calculations will not be correct. 
right because the actual position of the planet and the calculated position will differ so there was a need of constant improvement whereas with respect to dashantar dasha when you get the horoscope you can calculate the dashantar dasha for 120 years and 5 minutes and there is no chance of error so certainly dashantar dasha is superior and anyone who have used dashantar dasha both the systems of vedic astrology and western astrology they become fan of dashantar dasha it is so great and that is the case when people only know vimshutri properly you cannot imagine if you know all the 300 400 dashas what type of impact it will make to have that you see you will have to know it and to know it you will have to learn it this is the point right this you have to understand now this the thing this this you know this bhava chalit this sripati bhava chalit Right, this this system, the the second system of uh, Placidus, the Krishnamurti system is there. The earlier system of Pori Ferry, right, Sripati system. Sripati is somewhere around tenth century. Sripati is there, and Sripati makes this system, and Sripati says this system, and the influence is so strong. That even there is one version of BPHS which have the Sripati method of auto calculation. So in book writing, now there is Bhed Chal and Gati is there. So one uh, one publisher publishes Birat Parashar. Every publisher wants to publish Birat Parashar, but they tell their authors, they tell their translators that our edi our edition should be best. So they put some extra shlokas into it, some extra principles into it. So one such Hindu author, what they have done, they have put Sripati Bhavachalit into Parashar system also. Sripati happened in 10th century. So apparently he is saying that Parashar should have been in existence after 10th century, which is as absurd as it can be. The following thing is so, <laughs> so high, I will tell you, when English version of BPHS is being published, there is a translator author who is publishing the BPHS. In between the translation, he gets some disagreement with the publisher. So he stops doing the translation. He has some demand which the publisher do not meet. The author stops the translation. Whatever translation he has sent, that translation is published. It becomes very popular. Now the publisher cannot ignore it. The translator have left the publisher. But the copyright of the book is with the publisher, so he cannot complete the translation on his own. He sets his own publishing house. He starts publishing different type of books. This publisher finding that the book became very popular takes some other translator to translate the second part of BPHS. He do not even give the name of the second translator because the first translator is famous and the book, the second part of the book, which is not translated by the author, is still known by the name of the author. Don't ask me the name of the person. I am not telling in the video. That means I do not wish to tell. Right? Let's make it very clear. So the second part comes out, which is translated by someone else. The name is not given. Now in Breath Parashar itself, the Breath Parashar is in two parts around the chapter of 66 in Astrakvarga. The Breath Parashar is divided in the second part. Maitreya is asking the question that Parasharji, whatever you have told is very cumbersome, very difficult. People of Kali Yuga will have very little knowledge. So how they will do it? Parashar says that I am now telling you a simple system. Using that simple system, everything will happen well. It is not contradictory to the previous system and gives a result as well. So, Birat Parashar itself is divided into two parts in middle of it. But somehow this, you know, this publisher, uh, publisher translator disagreement happens and the translator stops translating after the chapter of Avastha. So, despite the fact that Parashar himself have divided the book into two parts in the chapter of Ashtakvarga, because he stops translating at the chapter on Avastha, the remaining chapter of Dashas is left out the book is divided as Brat Parashar, part 1 up to Vastas and part 2 Dashas onwards. Right. After the publisher have taken another person to translate, he puts a handwritten note, handwritten stamp on every Brat Parashar of himself that you must have enjoyed reading part 1 of it. Part 2 is also available. Please purchase. Also available now. Please purchase. When this happened, all the other English translators, after that, they have written two volumes of Parashar. English 
Parashar, it is always in two volumes. Volume one, volume two. Method is the same. The division is in the Avastha Dasha chapter. In the BPHS, it is always one volume work. This is how it works in astrology, right? You jump in well, I also jump in well. You jump in river, I also jump in river. But my river is better river than your river. Okay, good. So someone have also done this thing, but this system, this house division, this Sripati system comes from a person, an astrologer by the name of Sripati. Sripati is the son of Keshav. Keshav is the father of Sripati. Keshav have also written a book. Sripati have also written a lot of books. So what Keshav writes in his book? Keshav says, Jive Takwapi. Vibhanga Rishta Vibhanga Rishtaj Shishu Rishtam Vinami Yate Athadyo Abdaha Sisu Dustaro Apicha Paro Karyeshu no Patrika Karya Prashna Nimit Purva Sakuner Manam Dia Rakshata Hora Genus Buddhina Atra Bahudo Darkaschaka Lobali. What he is saying? Jeevok to copy Vibang Ristajarist Sunyam Bina Miyate. Sometimes the child can live destroying the yogas of short life. Atyo Abdaha Sisu Dustaro Api Cha Paro Karyeshu no Patrika. Sometimes the child can die despite having long life. That is the particular reason. One, two, three years in the life of the native is difficult. Thus, up to third year of age, the horoscope of the child should not be made. Even if you make the horoscope, you should clearly write, abolishing from your responsibility, that because I was not present at the birth time of the child, and someone have told me the birth details, I am making the horoscope as per the birth details. And you should take no responsibility is what his father is saying, right? The father of Shri Pati is clearly saying, take no responsibility. After that, he is saying, Karya Prashna Nimit Purva Sakune Manam Diya Rakshata. That Prashna Nimitta Omans and Purva Sakunam earlier Omans also work along with horoscope. Hora Gena Subuddhi Natra. So the one who knows the science of astrology from his understanding, intelligence, Should tell the result because Kal time is the most important or the most powerful factor. So basically, he is telling you that up to three years of age, don't make the horoscope. If you Parashar is telling you that if someone is born in Gandhant, if someone is born in Krishna Chaturdoshi Amavasya, just after 27 days after birth, when the yoga comes again, do the shanti. You don't make the horoscope. How you will do the shanti if you don't make the horoscope after three years of age? Eh? How you will do the Santi? He is telling up to three years of age, do not make the horoscope and after that understand that one can die despite having the combination of long life and one can have long life despite having the combination of bad life. Prashna, Muhurta, Omans, etc. Multiple things are there. So from your intelligence, you tell contradictory result to the native. Diplomatically, you say such things to the native that you are abolished of your responsibility. Is it the type of astrology we wish to do? Is it the type of astrology we wish to practice? Is a question I am asking you. If yes, then welcome to the Sri Pati Paddhati. Right? But for me, this is not the custom. In my prediction, I always say one thing to everyone. My astrological practice is not like I will say you something which will make you happy. Making you happy is not my purpose. I will tell what is truth. You like it. You don't like it. That's not the way. And I will want to say the truth as clearly as I can say it. Without any contradiction. Without any ambiguity. So the standard of Sripati is not something I resonate with. That's also I do not use Sripati methods. Regarding the Krishna Murti method, apparently, as I told you, Sri Krishna Murti wanted to do something in astrology. He wanted to make some research. Apparently, the research of nakshatras being ruled by grahas 
seems like it comes from Dhruva Nadi. It was discovered by Meena 1, Meena 2. They were working in close association with Krishna Murti Ji. People have it that Krishna Murti Ji stole the techniques from them, added this sublot, etc., into it, and took the concepts from Western astrology using this Bhava, Bhava system, periphery Bhava system, right? Western astrology aspects. Sorry, placed as house system, Western astrology aspects, Fortuna, etc., and made a new system which also started popularizing. He was very much influenced by Western astrology. So, in Western astrology, they don't use divisional chart. He is also not using divisional chart and all sorts of things, etc., etc. That is okay. There can be many followers of KP astrology who will take pledge by the name of KP astrology that it is very accurate and all sorts of things is there. I have only one comment. I have no grudge with respect to any of the person. Someone is practicing KP. Someone is practicing Nadi. If it is working for you, all well and good. But I am not practicing KP. What I teach is not KP system. Because I am not practicing the KP system, if Mr. Krishnamurti is saying that use this house system for my type of horoscope, use Placidus house system with my system because I am not using a system. I am also not using the Placidus system. Regarding what is found by Placidus the TTSG, that is the system based on the day duration, night duration, I have already told you that there are many places on earth where the uh, sunrise is for six months and sunset is for six months. So apparently it does not make sense for me mathematically as well. So that is the point. Right. Regarding the principles of progression, progression is also there in Vedic astrology. But you know, we in, Vedic, we in Vedic astrology, we have 19 planets, right? We have nine planets, five upper Kash Grahas, five Upagrahas, and we have multiple divisional charts. So we also have progressions, which is told by many sages in Vedic astrology also. But we, our astrology is not like Western astrology, which do not have divisional charts, right? They have something such as harmonics, but it is not the divisional charts per se. Their number of planets, etc., are also limited. So we also use progressions, but because we have more tools, even in Vedic astrology, to do the progressions, you don't need house cuspels, right? That is also the point. That is again the system. That is that, that is again the reason because you know in Vedic astrology there is no need of house division. That is the particular reason. House division we are not using. We should not use is the point. But leaving Sripati aside, one great system, one great text, Vedic astrology itself, what it is telling you, Bhaveshu, Bhavasput, Tul Bhaga, Istad Bhavajam Purna Phalam Vidatte, Sandav Phalam Nasti, Tadandarale, Chintyo Anupatataha, Khalu Khecharanam. Bhaveshu of the house, Bhava sput tulya bhag stad bhavajam. Whatever is the degree of the ascendant, that should be taken as the degree of every house. Stad bhavajam purna phalam vidyate. And planet in the house near the degree of the center gives complete result. Sandav phalam nasti. One on the either side of one at the junction of it. Their result is not there. Chintyo anupatta in this manner. As per the Anupat means as per the proximity. Khalu Khecharanam, the result of the planets should be found out. So what it is basically telling you? It is telling you that suppose ascendant is suppose ascendant is 13 degree. So make 13 degree as a middle point of every house. Fifteen degree be before this thirteen degree. So thirteen minus fifteen is equal to so from the twenty say Lagna is Aries. So from 28 degree Pisces, first house will start. 13 degrees Aries will be the center of the first house. And up to 28 degrees of Aries will be the first house. This is what it basically means. But the interpretation is very incorrect. 
it is telling you that if in a house we have to understand you know this is used to find equal house division this is not from the basic chapter right this is not from samgyana tattva this is not in this is not from basic chapter my friends this is from the chapter on house divisions this is from the chapter on how to analyze the house and the topic under discussion is suppose 11th house is having three planets sun mars and saturn who will give result of 11th house you say 11th house is gain so whether sun will give gain through government or mars will give gain through army police or sun saturn will give gain through servants or business who will give the result you can say one can be in government army or government police i don't know if there is a private army or private police but or one can be a government servant this is a result that also you can say but this is not the way right one is a servant working for government that is servant for an is ips or one is a government servant is ips these are two different things so he is telling that because lagna is 13 degree check out of these three planets sun mars and saturn who is closer to 15 degree and whoever is close who is closer to 13 degree sorry and whoever is closer to 13 degree the result of that planet will be foremost so if sun is closer to 13 degree person is working in government mars is closer to 13 degree person is working in army police saturn is closer to 13 degree one is earning through servants that means one is into business the other two planets will also give the result, but that result will be secondarily, primarily result will be of this planet only. The shloka only means that because the shloka is coming in the chapter of analysis of bhavas and it have particularly been told that to decide which planet is prominently giving the result to the house. Which planet is giving the result prominently to the house, this system should be used. Right? So let's not do misinterpretation, though in Vedic astrology there is a great habit of misinterpretation, but just let not do it. Because it is not. Right. Now the point is, you see, equal house division, because if you take the Vedic concept that I am telling you, the Vedic concept is Rashi and house is equal. Equal house division, someone is telling that, okay, if you are born in 13 degree Aries, 15 degree before it is 28 degree Pisces and 15 degree after will be 28 degree Aries. So for you, first house is from 28 degree Pisces to 28 degree Aries. But is it true? You say if I am born in California, will I say that California is middle of the world? And thus England falls in east, so England is an eastern country. And Japan comes to my west, so Japan is a western country. If you take the concept of time to, if you make the concept of time individualized, then will it be correct? We say that day starts with sunrise. Because sunrise is happening for everyone. In the area, it is happening for everyone at a point of time. If I say that I am born at 9.23 a.m., so I will take the day to start from 9.23 a.m. Other person is telling that I am born at 6, 0, 10, 6 p.m. I will take the time to be at 0, 6 p.m. Then someone tells both of us that you come at the time of sunrise to me. I go to him at 9.23 a.m. and the other person go at 6, 10, 6 p.m. Will we be ever able to meet? The third person have invited both of us because he want to introduce both of us to each other. I believe and he told come at sunrise. I believe sunrise to be at 9.23 a.m. because I am born at 9.23 a.m. Another person thinks sunrise to be at 10.6 p.m. because he is born at 10.6 p.m. Certainly we cannot meet. So the concept that my Lagana degree should be taken as the base point is incorrect. Right. So the system one Rashi is equal to house, just do not take the system of the center of house, right? It is telling you that if you are having Aries in the ascendant, complete Aries is in the ascendant. Any planet situated in Aries is in ascendant. 
one planet at one degree in Aries, another planet at twenty-eight degree in Aries is in conjunction to each other. And even if there is a planet at three degrees in Taurus, though they these two are closer, the planet at twenty-eight degree in Aries and three degree in Taurus is closer, but still they are not in conjunction because the Rashi have changed. And the planet between one degree of Aries and twenty-eight degree of Aries, though they are farther away, but still they are in conjunction, right? So the Lagna degree is only indicative of what time in that two-hour period of the Rashi rising in the ascendant, or more or less depending on how long the day was. It just indicate at what point of time you were born, and it is not indicative of. house divisions right it it should not be used to divide the houses because it is like saying if i am born at 9:23 am i will consider 9:23 am to be the time of sunrise i will consider it to be be the time when the world came into existence which is not true because if everyone starts following the same thing there will be a lot of disruption right that we have to understand now William Lilly was a guy who also did the same thing. In earlier times, William Lilly is a very, you know, very famous William Lilly, Ellen Leo, very famous astrologist there. William Lilly uses the same system. He used to find the house cuspel, but he is not dividing the house, right? So he is saying that, okay, this is the 13th degree of the ascendant, which is very important for you because you are born at 13th degree. So this is an important point. So let's consider this as an important point, but he is not using this system to, you know, take it 15 degrees ago, the Rashi starts and 15 degrees later on the Rashi ends. He is not doing this and William Lilly is a very respected astrologer. So I uh, will like to go with William Lilly. Right, that the degree of the Lagna is very important. Like you take, you know, Sun is at 12 degrees higher, Mars is at 18 degrees higher. In the same manner, you take Lagna as a factor and you say Lagna is at this degree, sir. And because Lagna indicates your birth time, this becomes very important. For planets situated in different houses, it is the classical principle if there is more than one planet situated in a house to know which planet is giving the result of the house. You see which planet is closer to the Lagna degree in that house that you use. But apart from that, there is no other uses that you should very clearly understand. Right. That you should understand and that you should clearly take. Right. In Western astrology, the cuspel is being used because they don't have the shahs, but our sages have done a lot of hard work to, you know, at least 100, 150 the shahs are very clearly told in Vedic astrology, right? Other the shahs are told in tradition are present there. If we use house divisions, house cuspels, which Westerners have developed only because they were not having the shahs and they were not having divisional charts, according to me, it is bringing disgrace to the hard work of our sages. So I believe that should not be done. We have 16 divisional charts. We have 19 planets. We have a lot of factors. We have a huge list of significations. We have 400 with the shards. So the system itself is very, very perfect. And to a perfect system, when do you introduce something such as house division, etc.? You make it more complicated. You make it disturbed only. So that is also the particular reason, I believe. Because you see, when you learn astrology completely, there are many astrologers who don't know the difference between Shadvarga, Saptavarga, Dashvarga and Shodashvarga who don't know how to actually use the divisional charts. People are still delving into D10 needs to be used for profession. By Parashar have, Parashar have said the Shamshe Mahat Phalam. Neither the word Mahat nor the word Phalam means profession. Right. Because the concepts are not clear, people who are ignorant once again. Ignorant means those who don't know the reality, those who don't know the subject in entirety. Can you believe that? Okay. You know, Bhavachalis can be used, but the one who knows the system in entirety, Jyotish incomplete, will not need to use Bhavachalit, right? Because the system is already perfect, right? Nothing is needed. Also, let me tell you one thing. You know, in my thing that I use topocentric planetary position, there are two things into it, right?
one system is telling you that if we are taking the calculation, if you are calculating the planets, it should be calculated from center of Earth. This is geocentric, hai na? from the center of globe. I am telling you that if you have to calculate the position of planets, you put you calculate it from place of birth. This is called topocentric, right? Based on the topography of the person, geocentric based on the globe. Now, 98% of the astrologers use geocentric planetary position, which is center of the earth. So, friend, when you are finding planetary position from center of earth, which is taken at Greenwich, you see India is 5.30 in east time zone. So what is 00, zero time zone, right? That is green with GMT, green which mean time is 00. zero. So when you are calculating planetary position from green which mean time and ascendant, you are calculating from local place. Because ascendant, as I as I told you in the beginning, in ascendant is dependent on sunrise. And sunrise is dependent on the local place because sunrise happens as per the time and time is plus 530. India is 5, 5.30 in the east. This is time zone only. So ascendant, you are calculating based on the place of the birth. Ascendant is local and planetary position is center of earth. So how can someone say, because everyone is not using topocentric, and I am telling you those people who are advocating use Telich Chakra, they are using, they are using geocentric only because this they don't know. So planetary position, you are calculating geocentric, lagna is topocentric and you are saying that based on this degree of lagna, let's divide the 12 houses and based on this division, let's put planet into different houses. One of that is topocentric, one of that is geocentric, how you are dividing. It is like purchasing one dozen of apple. It is like purchasing one liter of rice. It is like purchasing one kg of water. Good. Purchase it. Now let's understand one point regarding in astrology there can be some confusion for example you say regarding Vimshotri Dasha some people believe that it is told that Vimshotri should always be used whereas I don't believe that because I do not find the principle which tells you that Vimshotri is the only Dasha because other Dashas are mentioned right any person who will know that there are multiple Dashas will know for certain that if there are multiple Dashas then Vimshotri cannot be the only Dasha right because there are multiple Dashas are out there as well. But apart from that, there is a very direct opinion that yes, Vimshotri Dasha is a very important tool to time events. And though I am telling you that I don't use Vimshotri Dasha always for time events because other Dashas work better, I cannot tell you that Vimshotri does not work, right? There is a single opinion. But regarding the Bhava Chalit, if you take whole of Western astrology into consideration, there are 33 plus systems of Bhava Chalit. Right? And out of these 33 plus systems, there is no single opinion in any of them that this is the best system or that is the best system. In fact, in only Jagannath Ura, you can find more than 10 systems of Bhav Chalit out there. Right? So because there is no singular opinion, Jagannath Ura, there is Periphery House System, Placidus House System, Coach House System, Regio Montanus House System, Campanus House System, Axial Rotation House System, Polish House System, Page House System, Algabetus House System. These are 12 systems in total. Apart from that, there are many other house systems also. The number is more than 30, right? There is sun sign house system, this house system, that house system, all is there. There is no singular opinion on which house system should be used. There is no singular opinion on which house system is correct. Right? If something is working by experience, if you say that something is true and it can be proven by experience, it can be true, proven by experience by all. It's not like, no, this is true from experience, but in my experience, it is true. In your experience, it may not be true. That's not the case. If something is true, it will be true for all. So I am telling that, okay, this is my system that I have found out. If you apply my system, you will get the same result that I can get. Because I am telling the system completely. I cannot say that this is my system. It only works for me. It will not work for you. That's not the case. The truth works for everyone. 
then the chalice chakra is actually working if it is actually based on pragmatic research real horoscopes why it is not working for everyone everyone is having a different opinion right from the time of ptolemy ptolemy who have started the complete result all to the sun sign house system which is very latest exile rotation which is very latest right made by some developer around 2006 i believe there is no singular opinion on what is working. Some is taking elliptical based system. Someone is taking space based system. There is no singular opinion. Why? So when everyone is saying that my system is best, it is best to timing events. It is best to looking at horoscope. Singular opinion is not there. Vedic astrology, see all of the astrologers will say yes. Aries is lauded by Mars. Everyone will say yes. Sun have seventh aspect. Everyone will say yes. Vimshotri Dasha, Ketu Dasha is followed by the Dasha of Venus. Everyone will say yes, yes. Right, so opinions are very clear, right? Ninth lot indicates fortune, yes. Ten thousand indicates profession success, yes. Only slight difference of opinion will be there. That too slight difference of opinion can also be consigned well. Right, this thing is not happening with Chalit Chakras because it is not working. It is only working in the mind of the practitioner who are using it. Right. As per the system of Shripati, as I told you, one the cuspel of two houses can fall in the same Rashi. So it can be the case that Leo falls in two houses, Libra, fall, Libra falls in two houses and Taurus also falls in one house. So from the system of Sripati in some horoscopes, Sun can be Lord of two houses, Venus can be Lord of three houses in some horoscopes, Sun can be Lord of no house in some horoscope, Sun can be situated in a Rashi which cuspel is not falling in any house, that is Sun is not situated in the horoscope, all, horoscope either. This point I have also told you earlier. But there I forgot to told you that sun can be a lot of two houses also as per Sripati. And, and in the being the lot of two houses, it is not the lot of two houses by owning two Rashis. But it is the lot of two houses by owning the same Rashi only because the same Rashi have expanded into two houses. This is killing, butchering, murdering, pelagrizing, compromising, distorting, destroying the basic principle of astrology, the basic fundamental principle of astrology. Which according to me is unacceptable. Right. Unacceptable. Also, I also told you one point that Venus and Saturn are friendly towards each other because in the ascendant of Venus and will, Saturn will be the lord of good houses in the ascendant of Saturn. Venus will be lord of good houses. But if you use Sripati system, then it can be the case that for a Libra ascendant, Jupiter is lord of both fifth house and fourth house. Then in that particular scenario, because Saturn have no house lordship, you cannot say this point certainly that Saturn is always the friend of Venus. For some horoscope, it may not be the friend of Venus. In that scenario, there will be a planet Saturn, which will be neither friendly nor inimical to Venus. Is it something? Can, can we say that, okay, these are the two planets, but in your horoscope, because Saturn is the Rashi of the Saturn, uh, Aquarius and Capricorn, their uh, cuspel is not falling in the center of any house. So in your horoscope, Saturn is neither friendly to any planet nor inimical to any planet. Can we say that? Apparently, we cannot. <laughs> you have to understand it. Also, you see, for the ascendant of, say, Aquarius, Mars is a bad planet. He gets exalted in a bad house. Jupiter is a bad planet, functional malefic. He is exalted in a bad house. Why? Because they are inimical to Lagana lot. But if you use Sripati system, it can be that Capricorn is the, the cuspel of the 11th house is falling in Capricorn. So in that scenario, if Mars is there in 11th house, though people have the opinion that within Bhavachalit only Bhavas are changing, Rashi is not changing, Rashi remains the same because they know if they say Rashi is also changing, then you know, then it is mud muttering the astrology. But how it is the case? How you can say that, okay, this is Aquarius ascendant, Mars is exalted, but in 11th house. How can you say that Aquarius ascendant, Mars is exalted in Capricorn, undisputed fact, and Aquarius ascendant, Capricorn is not in 11th house. Simple, clear case. Otherwise, if it is in the 11th house, 11th house is a malefic house, 12th house is a neutral house. So in that case, for Aquarius Ascendant, because Lagna Lord is owning one Malefic house and Lagna, uh, the Lagna Lord itself should be functional Malefic to the native. Is it something that can be accepted? Apparently not. It is like saying person is inimical to himself. No person in this world can be inimical to himself. 
right even in the worst condition a person will want to save himself or his body for that matter whatever you say so the basic structure of astrology the backbone of astrology is destroyed once you start using such illogical useless systems such as bhavachalit that is also something that we have to understand also as i told you there is a difference between the lagna degree is the starting point of the lagna or the middle point of the lagna why there is no singular opinion because by experience it is not working so anyone who is using it using it with their own bias and they are coming with new formulas we have very simple funda no mars is a malefic saturn is a malefic rahu is a malefic sun is a malefic no one is the person who will tell you sun is not a malefic someone will say it is cruel but not a malefic but no one will come and say you sun is a beneficial planet and i declare jupiter to be a malefic planet they cannot say it because the system is true and it is correct and it will be true and correct for everyone no matter whoever uses it. if the rasgulla is sweet if the toffee is sweet anyone will eat it it is sweet only right it is nowhere going to be bitter until unless it is expired right that's how you understand right lastly the point of the sripati house system why i tell you that people are ignorant because even in mathematical astrology there is something as yam yutra vritta sadhan because while calculating the ascendant also this point is very clear that sun is not always going over the head of everyone so for someone it can be into yam in the south in the left hand and for some it can be in the north uttar so when you are calculating the ascendant mathematically there is a calculation that is put yam yutra vritta sadhan right because sages know that sun is not always crossing over the head of the person so for people born out of the places between tropic of cancer to tropic of capricorn yam yutra vritta sadhan is there right and between the tropic of cancer to tropic of capricorn also sun will not always be at a point right it is fluctuating like this and this as i told you in the as i saw you in the diagram as i made in the diagram so at the current point of time based on the current date whether the sun is actually over the head or a little bit of southeast or a little bit of northeast that have to be calculated for which there is yam yutra vritta sadhan in mathematical calculations so anyone who knows about how spherical astronomy and mathematical astrology specifically with respect to vedic astrology how it is done and calculated cannot have this absurdity of chalit chakra in their mind at all but for those for whom yam yutra vritta sadhan is a new word spherical astronomy is a new word mathematical astrology is a new word how the lagna is calculated is a new concept to them what i can expect out of them <laughs> so you know expecting that they will understand expecting that they will change their ways i believe is impossible because the first trait of ignorance is a ignorant person will not listen to anyone and will not listen to anyone means that no matter how you will try to make them understand no, no matter how much you explain to them they are not going to understand i wanted to make the video in two parts but the video have been very long <laughs> right because the concept is quite big so what i will do i will make second part of the video where we will take some example horoscopes where we will precisely see some horoscopes where as per the chalit chakra particularly focusing on shripati bhava chalit and krishna murti bhava chalit and we will see in some horoscopes how planetary positions are changing and we will see whether the changed position reflects the reality reflects the truth or the actual position reflects the reality and reflects the truth and in doing so you will learn a lot of astrological principles as well right so second part will do thank you for patiently watching it so far and uh, i know that uh, you will have to go through the video all over again so please if you actually want to like there is one thing that i have told you right in the beginning i don't use bhavjalit so go by that as subham sir don't use uh, subham ji uh, subham not subham sir not subham ji subham does not use bhavjalit okay leave it that is your answer i have just told it in the beginning but still if you are interested in the technical aspect of it i have told you a lot of points and i will highly recommend you to go through the video all over again and make notes because 
until and unless you take pen in your hands and you start writing, the mercury will not improve. And if mercury does not improve, you will not grasp the knowledge. So the best way is to take pencil, take pen, uh, notebook and start writing it. Right. So please do that for your own betterment. Thank you.